Police Minister Peggy Tsele and Home Affairs Minister Aaron Mutwaledi are in deep slurred following days of heated exchanges between residents and law enforcement officials. People in the area have been protesting over a spate of unresolved murder cases. On Wednesday night, a Zimbabwean national Elvis Nyati was killed by an angry mob reportedly going door to door demanding IDs and passports. We're joined now by the Southern African Regional Institute for Policy Studies, Ibo Mandaza. Thank you very much uh, for availing yourself this afternoon. So you have characterized the horrible murder of Nyati as yet another example of such abject leadership in South Africa. Yes, I have. Well, it's worse, it's worse than xenophobia. It's, it's, and, uh, it's Afrophobia. So the targets of xenophobia are Africans, so-called foreign Africans. And this is almost peculiar to South Africa alone. Um, you don't, you don't, you don't hear of this in other countries. So yes, there is a problem in South Africa. Um, in 2016, according to my knowledge, at least um, some Rwandans um, were attacked uh, by Zambians living there, and they looted the shops. Uh, we are taken back to history when uh, Nigerians demanded that Ghanaians must leave the country, and that boiled down to socio-economic issues. Uh, perhaps. The level of violence that we see is unprecedented, but how do we stem the tide of Afrophobia on the continent? You speak of a lack of leadership, and when people on the ground are not participating in the economy, it can manifest itself in a number of senseless ways. Yes, as I said, there's xenophobia wherever it's really is yet, whether it's in Rwanda, whether it's in uh, Zambia, wherever. Nigeria, as you mentioned, or Ghana. Uh, it is shows a failure of leadership the failure of leadership of leaders to tell and explain to their population that no african is foreign significantly the regions you have mentioned west africa and east africa have moved far ahead of southern africa for example in the east african community all you require as a citizen of that region is an id and you can move around freely including uh, ob obtaining unemployment, residence, and there's no, there's no, there's no talk about foreigners uh, taking the jobs of, 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 the, of the locals, none at all. There's a, there's a, there's a raging myth in South Africa, this myth that uh, foreign uh, natives are taking jobs of locals, that's nonsense. Assuming, uh, pathetically, we removed all foreign natives the unemployment rate in South Africa will not go down, nor in any country in the region, nor in Africa, nor anywhere for that matter. So that myth needs to be exploded in a systematic way through education, through, through, through leaders coming to the fore and explaining that. So, uh, I mean, and then you have this uh, tendency of targeting the poor and deprived, such as Nyati. You don't hear of Afrophobia in, in Houghton or, or Santon. Hmm? What is it? Only in the, in the high density areas. There is a problem. We need to interrogate this very clearly instead of being defensive about it. With uh, much talk about the African Continental Free Trade Area Act, which heavily depends on the free movement of people for it to become a reality, um, what do you perceive? You talk about a big problem in the Southern African region and West Africa. People are able to move around freely. You just need one passport and you can enter from one country to another, which is yet something that we are to see in Southern Africa. What do you perceive has taken so long? It has to do with Zimbabwe and South Africa. In uh, 1985, I was part of a team of consultants which did the protocol on freedom of movement of, of peoples in Southern Africa. And significantly, Zimbabwe did not endorse that. And, and uh, after 94, South Africa has not endorsed that. So we have the two uh, largest uh, uh, former settler eco economies being the most difficult, the most anti-Pan-African, anti particularly South Africa. Sometimes I, I, I imagine that the South African leaders, if I can't even spell the term, the word Pan-African, is terrible, really. You know, until they come to the table and explain, especially your Minister of Home Affairs, 
is 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 nothing but a blazing uh, Afrophobia, if I may say so, you know. And no one has brought, brought him to book. No one has, has challenged him, you know. We we invited him to a program, and uh, he, he didn't even re respond to our invitation, you know, because we need to confront the leadership in South Africa on these matters. With that in mind, when you talk about confronting leadership in South Africa, uh, with the conversation that you have with people from the rest of the continent, um, what is the thought on what is happening in the country? What's happening in South Africa? If people are very disturbed. Uh, they, they, they use the terms that I've used. Uh, the South African situation is very peculiar when it comes to Afrophobia, that there is a deep-seated problem historical, but uh, certainly uh, one that requires the leadership and academia and intellectual and the media yourselves to, to transcend by, by, by ventilating and interrogating this specter of Afrophobia systematically. But what you are seeing in, in sections of the media and even retorts to my tweets this morning is a defensive attitude and even an attempt to justify it on the grounds that, for example, someone said, well, we should blame Zimbabwe for, for what is happening. Uh, uh, and I said, yes, Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean state is highly culpable for the migration of its citizens. 75% uh, of Zimbabwean skilled and professional people are outside the country. Uh, running away from dire economic straits, uh, some are political, uh, for political reasons. Yes, but nothing, nothing at all justifies Afrophobia. Nothing justifies xenophobia.